I'm deaf. What are you talking about? I it don't comes need with to be the, deaf. I don't want to be deaf. I am deaf. It comes with the territory. I see. <laughs> Fuck. I'm so sad. You can only bartend in so many clubs before you start using some of this. So you ordered a you ordered an eight piece. <laughs> just, um, go ahead and pull through. Please. Go ahead. Yeah. Just Your just been ready. I don't know why you're sitting here talking to us. Go ahead and pull through. Yeah. Just you might you might as well just. Alrighty. 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 I guess. Um, okay. So this is like a good test run. Um, so. Since it hasn't really started and I've already started recording, so we're just going to take stuff out of the pilot. Because why, why, why have structure to a pilot? Why the fuck would you have structure to a pilot? We don't need structure. Fuck structure. Yeah, fuck your structure. That's not what you're here for. I'm not here for structure. You're here for good quality bullshit nonsense and great advice. I want some fucking quality advice to come out of this shit that you're not going to hear from your grandparents or your parents. <laughs> or your brother. Yeah. And don't listen to grandma. She's lying. She was in the back seat giving hummers and flashing her titties. She, she was that Burger King bathroom that humped that. Like the Humpty Dance. Yes, that's, right. that's, what, that's who he was talking about. Well, I mean, honestly, for you, probably not your grandma, but your mom could have been the guy that Humpty was talking about in the Burger King bathroom. Damn. Oh, uh, yeah, my mom's kind of old. Yeah, because, I mean, when that song came out, jeez, let's say that's where my mom was. My mom was already a mom when that song came out. Dear Lord. So if, if she was in a Burger King bathroom, she would be in trouble. How old is the, uh, what's his name again? Is how does Humpty Dumpty? I know the da- I know the song is called Humpty Dumpty. But had to have come out in what late eighties, so he would. I would imagine he'd probably be about my mom's age, probably late fifties, early sixties. I forget who sings that damn song. It's a uh, digital underground. There it is. But that's more than one person, no? Yeah, it's a bunch of people. Honestly, like it was a big group of people. It was like as many people as Wu Tang is or something. Ah, yeah, that is true. Wait, close the door. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, baby. Yeah, close it. Yeah, no, it's easier to just. Yeah. Oh, there it is, and we're in it. Okay. Yeah, caffeine. Joey's nicer when he has caffeine. Oh yeah. So quick coffee break. Yep. Um, please hold. I think the way we can do it is just like, um, whenever you're ready, we'll do like the CJ and Joey in the morning, and then I'll intro it. Be like, hey, what's up? It's your boy. Blah blah blah. blah. And then you're gonna intro, intro yourself same way, and I'll be like, this is that fucking show. I'm going to call it the game report until we come up with something better. But yeah. And then we can just jump right into the topic. Okay. But yeah, continue with you. If you got to, if you got to continue to sip the coffee, yeah, we can. Fine. Uh, okay, cool. So this is going to be the uh, pilot for um, CJ and Joey, Joey in, in the, the morning. morning. And this is your boy. You already know what it is. It's your boy, CP Killer, AKA the chocolate American, AKA young tarantula, AKA watch your bitch. Cause I will steal her. Also known as the Black Colonel Sanders. And the Black Mario. What is good? And with me in the studio, brand new, brand new, is uh, the one, the only, the, uh, the the brown Twinkie, the absolutely amazing Joey Pierce. Um, also known as Joey the one and only. <laughs> and the serial killer, uh, spelled cereal, you know, like the breakfast cereal. Um, and the Native American Jackie Robinson. Anywho, we're in this bitch talking about, oh, we're calling, this is the game report. Let's go ahead and start there. This is a show where we give you great advice on how to either get in the game or stay in the game. Literally. Like, relationships, you know, um, women preferably. If, you know, women come on the show, we give them advice too. If we don't disclude, or what is it? We don't, uh... We don't discriminate. There we go. Yeah. We don't discriminate. We're all inclusive. Yes. All inclusive. Um, today... And disclaimer, we cannot be responsible if you do not actually follow our advice. So yes. don't ask if you're not going to follow it. Honestly, you, I, hey, if you don't like to take advice, just go ahead and turn us off. Because yeah. that's that's all we're going to do here is give great, wholesome advice based off of experience. <laughs> and, uh, also, I don't know about the whole, <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real here. We're going to be talking about some dirty shit. Because, I mean, this is about how to get some ass. And you're about how to keep it. Yeah, gang. So my job is how to slay ass. Yeah, so. so. It's not going to be wholesome at all. Wholesome dude. without the W. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe wholesome Ho- advice. Oh. <laughs> but That's, that is the move. That yeah, is the move. That is. I mean, Honestly. like, uh, ludicrous style. Wholesome advice. Uh, yeah, because, you know, we'll have them everywhere. Different area codes. I got hoes. There are always hoes. The hoes are of no short supply. That's the thing. Okay, let's just go in right there. First and foremost, there is no short supply of hoes. I mean, that is the problem that you see a lot of guys out there. 
Um, I think they said on 40 year old virgin, they put it best. Don't put the pussy on a pedestal. Don't. Okay. It's in so many songs too. I could probably quote like three. For example, uh, CJ was there. He saw this at work. I mean, it was just a casual compliment. This girl at work, her name's Taya. She's a, (laughs) she is a big titted moron. Oh, um, who, uh, you know, it doesn't have much to offer. She's sweet. Um, but ultimately, you know, just dumb as a box of rocks. No, um, she came in on Friday last week and something about her eyes, I don't know, looked a little bit different. And so I said, you look prettier than normal. I, uh, I thought it was a great, you know, I knew it was happening right away. But, but <laughs> I was like, uh, oh, she, she didn't that's what we did as much as I thought she should. And then also, you know, it was ultimately a backhanded compliment, which is game 101. You have to be able to do the backhanded compliments. Yeah, it's a takeaway. Mm-hmm. A takeaway. Yeah. Takeaway is a strong, strong tool, my friends. Use it. Use it. Use it sparingly, though. That's the thing. I've had uh, people apply it um, to the wrong hose, and it was effective as always, but ultimately too effective because those hoes didn't want to leave, and the uh, takeaway was inadvertently used. Uh, my friend John, he actually told a... Oh, God. Okay, so this is kind of... I'm sorry. My, You know, I am a fellow chocolate American here, but... And no one is safe on this show. Yeah, no, but... Okay, so this girl, her name is Paris, okay? She's a chocolate American. Um, and Paris with two auras, okay? Come on. What the fuck? Why do you guys have to misspell your names? But, okay. That has nothing to do with them. No, no. This, you know, but the thing is, Paris with two auras, she was trying to hit on my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to hit on my friend John, just unabashedly trying to hit on my friend John, and he was not having it. And so um, John, uh, being the rookie that he was, he went and told her that she was too intelligent for him. (coughs) Pause. What? Yes. And needless to say, um, she didn't like that, you know, because... You know, no, what girl is going to like you saying that, I'm sorry, I can't date you, you're too You're too smart. <laughs> you are entirely too smart for my like entire that. person. Right. Your intellect intimidates me. <laughs> yeah, she was uh, less than pleased. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Smooth. And then John um, didn't understand why when you tell a strong black woman that she is... Oh, she was black? Her name is Paris with two R's. What the hell do you think we're talking about here? White folks don't name their kids Paris with two R's? uh, uh, Yeah, that's true. That's true. Actually, I did... did, Shout out to Paris. I don't even know where she is now. But she definitely was like P-A-R-R-I-S. And she was like white. But she had like this weird chocolate sense to her. And I was like... What are you? She's like my mom. Like she looks exactly like my mom, same mm-hmm. skin tone. So I was okay. like, oh, oh, so, okay, okay, all right. I'll let you have it. I'll let you just, you know. So, so she was just like an urban white girl. Though. Yeah, pretty much. I was like, here's your black card. Mm-hmm. Um, don't lose it. You only get one. Make sure it's on you at all times when right. confronted by chocolate people. Mm-hmm. Um, I gave her all the. I gave her the rundown. Right. I gave her the rundown. And you're not going to be accepted. I mean, we had that issue with uh, Jamal, aka Preston, at work. You're not going to be accepted by all chocolates. Shout out to Preston. It's yeah. Shout out to Preston. Uh, what's up? And uh, he's actually the after. For the before and after on CJ being Captain America. Okay, just we're gonna get him there. Oh yeah, you know we're gonna get you there. Yeah, yep. you, you know once again, Mad Celery is where I need to be. Yeah, Mad Celery. Bulk season. Bulk season. Bulk season. Uh, shout out. To, oh, sh- quick sidetrack. Shout out to all the gym rats. Um, chill out today. <laughs> You're gonna eat tomorrow, um, and then just be back on a Friday. Honestly, seriously, just take a rest day, guys. Uh, your muscles need it every now and. Honestly, you know, honestly, you guys spend way too much time there. We all do. Yeah, the food because yeah, I promise you, most people are in there like at least an hour, two hours, Seriously. three hours a day. I remember I was in there for almost like four, four to six hours at some point because I was just working out. I had so much, so much energy, dog. Yeah, so it's crazy. Nice. Yeah. So, anyways, um, Preston Jamal, we had a little issue with um, you know being a non-chocolate American and having um, you know chocolate Americans question some of the things that I say because let's be real here. I say some fucked up shit. Yeah. You know, I say some pretty, what might be construed as racist stuff. And it's not, um, it's not meant in a racist way. It's just meant in a very honest way. Yeah. Like it's, it's real. Yeah. It's, it's I'm, more I'm real than anything. I'm not anything bad about any one race or the other. I mean, I, we all have stupid things that we live up to, you know, um, 
I'm Native American, Indian, whatever you want to call us. I, we call ourselves Indians if uh, they're saying Native American. They're usually pissed off at white people. Yeah, I heard indigenous people is uh, very popular. I don't know if that is true or not. It's but... more with your generation. Ah, uh, It's a younger people thing to call us indigenous people or any of that. Yeah. It's a newer thing, newer development. Yeah, they tried to change the whole Thanksgiving Day to have like, indigenous something, indigenous people. Or, yeah, they even like, say aboriginal and then like. Yeah, and I'm like, what? That's like on um, Boys in the Hood when they, uh, when he says it. Um, you know, you're from Africa, and like the uh, Ice Cube character, I think, uh, says, "I'm not from Africa. You're from Africa. You African booty scratcher." African booty scratcher. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm not an Aborigine. Okay, I'm sorry. Nothing against Aborigines. Once again, but I'm not. Shout an out to the Aborigines. Yeah. Shout out to <laughs> Aborigines. We love you. Stay chocolate. Let's go. Let's go Australia. Yup. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to be called an Aborigine because, or an Aboriginal person, at, you know, that's what that makes me think of is if you call us the Aboriginal people, they're from, they're from Australia. We're not from Australia. That's true. That's true. From America. So America. America. Born and raised. Wrong Probably. Here, not flown here. <laughs> <laughs> Planted bitch. <laughs> anyway, back to the fucking topic of the day. I don't know how we just strayed off so far, but it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Um, I had one of my homegirls, Mel, hit me up. Shout out, Mel. It was good. She says, would you date a friend's ex? Okay, so... I mean, are we supposed to be advising on whether we would or whether we should? I think this more of like a quite like an open ended because mm -hmm. I could see this going more than one way. Because like, it de honestly, I'm gonna start it off. Here we go. I think it it, it definitely does depend. <clears throat> Has it happened to me for sure? I haven't been the one to do it. Shout out to Lance, but um, it has happened, and I'm just like, okay, well, like, what what do you like? You know, it's already happened now. So, like, how do we reconcile the situation? Like, do are we cool? Like, me and Lance are cool, mm -hmm. clearly. So that worked out. Right. But like, if you're not, if you don't know how to process shit like that, you know what I'm saying? I'm thinking that's probably where the real question opens up. Because then I'm like, well, I, I mean, we, we kind of touched on this earlier when we had already received the question, but we weren't on air, and we were even you know talking about what does dating mean nowadays that's true what is that word as a as a word how what is the definition that you guys are using because i mean it seems so loose to me yeah as far as what dating even is it's 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 a weird paradigm because it's like almost because the way we like to split it up like you're in the talking phase in the beginning mm -hmm. like you're just how you're like you're just meeting this person like probably just dming each other back and forth like lord forbid you're texting because like right. if you're getting there by the if you're already there like you already got numbers exchanged like oh you've probably known each other for a second right but like if and you're already flirting i mean you're on yeah you're you're on the way to most likely more than talking or whatever end up dating that's true yeah you start to initiate the flirt and it starts to be recognized by both parties right. and like participated with but, but so like now you've like started talking a little bit see so i mean i think that it actually goes um the question the root of the question is uh by the time that you're already talking to somebody flirting with somebody You've already crossed a bunch of boundaries. That's true. I mean, if you, depending on how close you are to this friend, like let's say for some hypothetical reason, CJ and I had uh, something like that happen. Before that even got anywhere like that, I would be talking to CJ. I'd say like, you know, these uh, messages are coming across. Um, pretty, a little. Uh, pretty flirty. Yeah. And, you know, I <laughs> don't really know how to take it. Um, you know, with it, with he and I, it's an easy question to answer. Mm. He is my first concern, you know? So if, if some girl likewise was, you know, if some girl were possibly going to cause any kind of difficulties between us getting along, that's an easy question to answer. I mean, it would be brought up before that person was even aware that it was going to be a, a, an issue. Yeah. That's like a silent, that's a silent meeting. Yeah. But that's also based off of like personal advice. If you'd have like, if you have people in your life that you can like console with at the time to, I guess, go through that process, like mm -hmm. do it. However, it's going to be a little tough trying to confront the person that you're like talking to about right. this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So I think you're part of your answer is right there. Like how important is the friend, um, that is, you know, in relation to the ex. Ooh, that part. Yeah. So, I mean, how important is that friendship to you? Because it is going to change. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Not necessarily implying that it's going to be bad or good. It's just going to change. 
You know, and I mean, ultimately, all things change. And if it's a good, solid friendship, nothing and, will like literally no, nothing will fuck up the chemistry. Right. Nothing will fuck you up. Know, the, but the if, situation changes. Yeah. Because I mean, if uh, <laughs> you know, if it was that important for him to date one of my ex, for, I'm sorry, if that was that important for CJ to date one of my exes and he came and talked to me about it and said, you know, um, I'm talking to this person. You know, that not like we're even to the point of like dating, dating, but we're just starting to message each other. There's some chemistry there. I kind of need to see what's going on with it by all means. Yeah. You know, and I, I mean, it's X. That's true. You know, and unless it's on like some really <laughs> shit bad terms, then there's no reason that I would tell you to not do it. And I wouldn't ever tell you not to do anything anyways. I would just strongly advise against it, especially on some of the X's I have. Yeah, it, yeah, it depends on the person too. Like, right. it, if the ex is toxic, like I'm just be like, yo, like, <laughs> right? thought I let you know. I'm not saying you can't, but <laughs> just so you know, here is this the pamphlet of, of warning crazy signs are off the chart. Okay, Absolutely here's acceptable. Here's where she is. Here's the book of red flags that yeah. um, I've accumulated over the years. Mm -hmm. Think you, you should probably read box. that. Yeah, just go ahead and uh, go ahead. Hold You're that. Fine. Hold that. <laughs> you know, read at your own discretion. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, there's a big part of the answer right there. Are you that, to, like, committed to the friendship? Which one is going to be more important to you? If there's, if it's going to cause any kind of issues, which one is truly more important to you? That's is part. the new relationship that is, you know, just brand new that you're not even, you know, fully sure of what it's going to be like? Is that that important to you? Or is the friendship more important to you? That part. Yeah, man, because if you have to risk a friendship for a, f a relationship, I don't know. I don't know. It don't seem the same. Mm -hmm. It depends on how strong the friendship is, though, because we did discuss that. Right. Because if it was like a like a me and his scenario, I don't, it wouldn't go nowhere. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, all right, man, do what you want. I'm cool. Like, right. handle it. You know what I'm saying? But if yeah. it's sort of someone that like work, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, you can have that. <laughs> but and you like I I just won't kick it with you like right. you're fine but yeah so I think honestly uh, a whole bunch of it can be kind of wrapped up as far as um, where is the like the okay so if the person asking that question where are they coming from you know at what point. at what point at what point did it start <clears throat> to matter to them where they even need to ask that question are they um. Are they already worried about it affecting the friendship? That part. Are they already attracted to somebody that it may affect the friendship? Yeah, like, are you the receivee? Like, okay, so from the receivee end, like, you're the person about to date the ex, then I would say it would depend on the friendship that you have with both people, honestly. Because if, like, the relationship that you're about to get in is stronger than the friendship you're about to leave behind, then you don't really have anything to worry about. However, you do have to think about the backlash of all of the rest of the circle. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't think that would matter much to you, though, because, like, those who are outside opinions, and normally how I deal with relationships, I don't give a fuck about outside opinions, yeah. until which time it really starts affecting people. And, like... Unless those outside opinions are something that's important... You know, like, you know, with certain recent exes. Yeah. I mean, sometimes um, your true friends are going to impose those opin opinions on you for your own well-being. Well, yeah, exactly. You know? Like, if people are being, I, 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 I like to see it as, like, if you guys were, I guess if you were, like, being harmed physically and or emotionally by what I'm not seeing mm -hmm. that is happening, right. then that's what I need to hear. Necessary. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Because this is, this is an everyday thing. Like, it needs to, this has to, like, stay how it is with someone else in my life trying right. to, t you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, because that person should be enriching your lives. You know what? So I think that actually kind of gets us going in the right direction. I mean, is, um, so... Ultimately, let's touch back on the question. Um, is it what was the question? Is it like, would you date a, an ex? Uh, would you date would your date friend's, friend's ex? ex? Yeah. Okay. So, um, I mean, is it going to enrich your life enough that you're willing to, um, you know, take all of the fallback that you're going to face? Because you're going to face fallback. That's true. You know, you're going to have uh, friends that are at different levels of, you know, the inner circle. That will have questions, will have, um, you know, ultimately they would probably give pause to it and, you know, not, not approve, you know? Yeah. 
if it was going to cause them more strife than it was like pleasure for, I, cause I would hope that they're thinking about you while they're answering your decision. Mm -hmm. Cause like, yeah, you do have to think about yourself in a way, but like if it's sheer, just going to be like, nah, I don't want you to do it. Cause I'm just going to feel some type of way then like, okay, kind of. But like, if you're really just being irrational about like, you're just being an asshole by saying that like, you're going to feel some type of way, then like you need to get over yourself. Cause like she, by all intents and purposes, one of y'all left each other for a specific reason. So right. like y'all yeah. aren't getting back together right now. She decided or he decided to move on mm -hmm. and uh with somebody who was around you that was can take care of them better. But well, I mean like certainly I mean I, um, I guess I went not the better. The thing that you didn't account for is that sometimes relationships just end and nobody is looking to replace anybody. That part. It just didn't work out. Yeah, you're right. Um, I didn't think of that. I mean you you can be friends even afterwards. It's rare. But I mean you can just end and it just was you know, on both sides, it was agreed upon and just ended. Yeah. It just kind of fizzled out. I like mean, a that, mutual agreement. Yeah. I mean, as you get older, you're going to run into some of those where I had one where I dated her and everything on paper was there. I mean, we were both uh, sober from alcohol. Um, we were um, in similar like financial circles. We both made about the same amount of money, maybe, you know, pretty close. We were mm. on higher end. Everything looked great, you know, but there was no fire. There was no passion. Damn. And so it just didn't work out. So that was one of those where there wasn't any real, like, fireworks or anything like that. It just didn't work. Yeah, I feel that. And yeah, if, it does like, happen. If you, like, if you met her and you wanted to date her, I'd think, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because she she's not bad people. No, she's not bad people at all. She was totally fine. Just the situation didn't quite work between y'all. Yeah, the fire wasn't there. Yeah. I mean, you have to have passion. You have to have fire. Why else would you be wanting to talk to these people? You know, so the significant other has to have passion. You have yeah, to, that's true. You have that flame. That's true. I guess if you're, yeah, so you have to be, if you know that you have to just be cordial in the situation, if you're, so like I said, if you're on the receiving end, like you're about to date the ex, then like, I guess feel out your situation because it does depend on who it is. Because mm -hmm. if the, if the friend's cool. Obviously that'll work, but if it's not, then like, if you still want it that bad, then I guess you're going to have to work your way around it. Cause I mean, like, obviously nothing should, cause there's that passion, right? you know what I'm saying? And but also, I mean, the thing that you need to be honest with yourself about is where, okay. So in our situation, we're two males. Okay. Mm. And if a girl were to want to date me right after she dated you, mm. you have to think about her just being a hoe just for revenge sake. Yeah, I think that's a feeling. very solid possibility. I'm not saying it is what she's doing or necessarily even what she's trying to do. Sometimes it's even subconscious that girls are trying to do that, but I've seen it in action. I've been part of it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, my buddy um, uh, Thomas Mark Graham, also known as Bradley, like he had a bazillion nicknames too. Damn. As always. <laughs> Shout out to Bradley. And um, yeah, I, I'm from. She's probably in my early 20s to my mid-20s. I knew Bradley. And it was when we lived in uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And Bradley ran through a bunch of cute, often tattooed girls when girls didn't have that many tattoos. And it was in the Coeur d'Alene area. So there's a, quite a few uh, like pretty women there anyways. And Bradley had kind of just run through those girls as I was um, married. I was a young married man. Mm. And I couldn't help but just, you know, appreciate them from afar because I'm, I was a good married man. Yeah, you was doing what you got to do. You know, but still, I mean, I, you know, can't help but see it like, oh, she's attractive. Damn, that's like the third one in a month. Jeez, Bradley. All right. <laughs> and then after I was, you know, on the way to divorce, um, you know, we were separated, but I wasn't quite official. I, you know, much to Bradley's credit, I ran through a whole bunch of his exes. Ooh. And we were still cool. Yeah. You know, and they absolutely, like a bunch of them absolutely did it because they knew who I was to Bradley. That makes sense. You know? That makes fucking sense. Yeah. So I know, I know the motivation. I know that the, uh, a lot of times for the girls, it is actually a motivator for them to do that for, with the sake of like revenge in mind. That's crazy. Cause like it, that type of shit works on some people. Right. And like, you know, of course, like Bradley and I had a. <clears throat> a pretty solid relationship not like you know as close as you and i but it was it was really good a good friendship mm. and it was a strong friendship so he didn't give a shit he thought it was funny and we'd trade stories about him and everything you know see that's how that's supposed to work right 
Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it was fine, but I mean, there are ultimately uh, going to be multiple people involved with um, whether this is going to work or not. Now, I, I, what I'm wondering is the question needs to be a little bit um, better defined on, are they asking, is it okay to date a friend's ex? I mean... Uh, the way I would go with it is this. Ultimately, I feel like you you have one life to live. Yeah. You know, and if CJ really wishes for me to be truly happy, he wouldn't be upset with me for needing to pursue that. Mm-mm. And same, vice versa. I wouldn't be upset with him for needing to pursue that. Yeah, because it wasn't meant to be on either end. So, I mean, it depending on where it was coming from. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like, if it's supposed to come back, it will. Yeah. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah, if that's meant to work out, then by all means, I mean, pursue it. I, you know, uh, life is ultimately short. And, and you should do what you want. Yeah. Go, you know, go ahead and get it. I mean, within reason. Yeah. Within so, reason. Yeah, within reason. I mean, no jail, no hospital. No jail, no know. hospital or death, but that's implied. <laughs> <laughs> that's implied by the hospital part. Yeah. It's, it's actually said in a Wendy's and a Jimmy John's too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, ultimately, I mean, life is short and you should pursue your happiness. Now, if that, if your friend is a good enough friend, then um, they should be comfortable enough to let you pursue your happiness and not give you any kind of static over you dating one of their exes. Yep, and then if they do, then you just don't have another friend. That's one less pe- That's one less person you have to feed later. Exactly, and I mean, because I mean, if, if they can't support you in your pursuit of happiness, they're not a real friend. Nope. Nope, nah, because all friends support at usually all the time. Yeah, and I mean it doesn't have to be a hundred percent, but you know, and if it's if it's uh, with good reason, if your friend's not supporting you on that choice, then there's probably a good reason. If they're truly a good friend and they're not offering support, then there's a good reason. For yeah, it. and you have to you have to hear it and you have to understand it. You don't have to like it, but you just have to understand it, and that takes a different level of. I guess acceptance, but it's more listening because, I mean, you have to be able to understand where that person's coming from when they when they have these types of feelings right. because those are still valid. Like, that was their love at first. Yeah. So, like, if you're going to be a part of it, you have to kind of know a little bit about it if it has something to do with you, mm-hmm. you know? So, I mean... Well, I mean, the thing also is what... Um also, as far as the person that is trying to date their friend's ex, I mean, what is your motivation? That part. Like, it, what did is you... It, is it uh, virtuous? Is it, you know, righteous? Hopefully you see something actually valuable here. Right. Or do you just want to give it a try because your friend had it? Yeah, that part. That you part. Know, are you just being jealous? Is it like your friend having a nice car or, you know, anything? Mm-hmm. And, or a nice, you know, just a nice article of clothing or whatever. You know, something is just unattainable for you at the time. And now it is attainable. And do you just want it? Right. Is it just like the idea of the forbidden fruit needing to be tasted? That part. Or is it genuine love or genuine attraction on both sides? Mm. I mean, that's ultimately where it gets really messy and where like real life comes in. Yeah. Yeah. And then the real reason is tested. Because if you if you would go into it thinking you have a real reason and it's bullshit, it will show. Mm-hmm. And everything will kind of uh, progress yeah, around that. Always comes out. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it's crazy how it do it too. Like, yeah. you know. And the thing is, that, <laughs> like, ultimately, that is probably a bigger part of the question being kind of a- ambiguous, like, kind of being slightly shapeless. That question needs a little bit more shape for us to really dig into it, because I need to understand what they mean, like. You know, what the perspective is. Right. Yeah. Are they asking for a go ahead? If that's the case, by all means, go ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, because your friend that has the ex, we already said this, like they should support you in your pursuit of happiness. And if they, if you truly believe that that is what you need to pursue for your happiness, then they should support you. Yeah. Wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, whatever happens, happens. Right. But yeah, I think. I guess we got that. I think we got it. I think we got that for what it, we squeezed out everything we could have squeezed out of that one. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That was a good one. That was fucking good. Yeah, I think we're good. Um, so sign out. Uh, thanks as always. This is uh, CJ and Joey in, in the, the morning. 
later.